We are going to talk about customer personas today. I hope you guys are all in the right place. Um, what we'll do today, just real high level, is talk about what a customer persona is, and then I'm going to walk you through, and I think this is the most valuable part, I'll walk you through how to actually put one together. Um, I have the slides out online. I have a, a link for you guys, and I also have a guide for you. So when you get back to your desk or get back home, you can start kind of using some of this stuff. Um, so, looking at customer personas, first thing, I put this up here because this, back in the day, customer personas were real huge, right? You had a retail shop. You knew who you were. Anyone within your local area, that was your customer, right? So this guy, you know, he's selling his groceries to this lady here, that, that's his customer. Things have changed now, with, especially with the internet. Your customer can be here, it can be across the world. So, we have to be able to look at our company, know what we sell, and who our customer is. So, Welcome. Anybody from out of state? No? Well, I thought this guy deserved some credit. I found it on the internet. He, uh -huh. he's, uh, I don't know what he's doing, but I was like, you know, I got to use him in my slide here. So, welcome. Uh, my name is Steve Bailey. Uh, I put these graphics back here because it is Bailey. Um, this will kind of help you a little history lesson. Harlem and Bailey and Bailey's Irish Cream with the spelling their, their brand wrong this whole time. It's actually B O E H L. <laughs> Um, this is my Twitter handle here, so if you want to get in touch with me via Twitter, there it is. Um, about me, not went too far. So I am the owner of a company called Punch and Face Marketing. What we do is we do, we are a full service marketing agency. Uh, we work with small clients to big clients and kind of find whatever we need to do to help them out from you know, website development to inbound marketing to whatever they need, flyers, direct mail, email marketing, whatever the case is. Um, I was born and raised here in Arizona. Any other natives? Yeah, all right. So I went to ASU, got my undergraduate in marketing, and then I got my MBA at Grand Canyon University. Um, wanted to go to a little bit smaller school for state ASU. Is a little bit overwhelming there. But, uh, I am a husband, have three kids, and one on the way. Kelly, that's news for you. That is news. Um, Congrats. Thank you. Uh, so I will have four children in very busy life. So I've been doing marketing about eight years. Um, I have done marketing from small companies to big companies. Um, where I used to work at Intel was the biggest company I've ever worked at. Marketing stuff for Sony, uh, which was a lot, a lot of fun. So a lot of money to spend when you're a marketer. You like to spend money and stuff. A lot of money. Around. So what is a customer persona? Um, it's this guy right here. All right. So in the sea of of customers, it's, it's this one guy. So the actual definition in is it's a semi-fictional representation of your ideal customer based on real data and some selected educational speculation about the customer demographics, behavior patterns, motivations, and goals. Got it, right? All right, questions? Can you send the uh, deck afterwards? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll give you guys yeah. a link that you can get to. Um, <laughs> that, that, is, <laughs> that is a technical, um, you know, Definition, uh, we'll, we'll get into that, we'll break that down, and we'll actually talk about what that means. So it is a little overwhelming. So, no, we'll, what is this? so what is a customer persona? What is it not? Uh, so it's not a target market. Your target market could be something like a zip code, um, something around that nature. So like that first slide, your target market is anyone that's around you. And it's not really what that is. Um, it's not a job title. It's not like the CEO of Intel. That's not a customer persona. Um, it's not specific real people, so it's not people that you actually go and look at and say they're coming in your storefront. That is not a customer persona. That's a customer. Um, it's not your actual customers. Again, it was a semi-fictional character, right? Uh, it's not relatives. I mean, I don't know how many people sell to their relatives. Usually, that's a bad idea. Insurance. <laughs> they want insurance. Yeah, I can see that. It's not friends. So, what is a customer? Couple examples here. So it's common behavior patterns. So when we look at some of those other examples, it's a common behavior pattern of a wide variety of, of customers. So when we say a specific person, it's not a specific person, but that specific person could be within the, the common behavior pattern of that customer. Um, they all have shared pain points. They all have something either personal or professional. Um, so th these are things that we're trying to find out about this customer. Is what are their pain points and how can we solve them? 
It's universal goals, wishes, dreams. It, it's what this customer persona wants to become, who they're becoming, all those types of things. Um, it's general demographic data and biological information. So it is, you know, if you own a retail shop, it is going to be surrounding area codes. But beyond that, who within that area code is your customer persona? All right. Um, so these people, these customer personas that we're putting together, these are the people we're marketing to. These are the people that we're trying to bring into our brand to buy our products, to buy our services. These are people who we are creating our content for. So if you have a blog, if you have something out there, it's who you're creating this content for. Um, even taking a step back, um, product development, it's, it's who are we creating this product for. So when you start off and you start a, a new company or you have a new product and service, who is that niche customer base you're trying to get? So who is your product and service? We're going to talk about that. Um, so let's let's kind of why is this important? Why why is having a customer persona important? We all want customers, right? More the better, right? So we could just cast out a wide net and hopefully we find something. Right? So when we start talking customer personas, there, there's a couple reasons why we want to go through this exercise and make sure that we know this fictitious character. First thing, so personas help us identify where your best customers spend time. So you can be there too. Hopefully, this is not where your customers are. Um, but if they are, you might want to jump in this kiddie pool and, and get to know them. Um, this is an extreme example, but where are they getting their information? How are they going about finding information? That's why we create this. So that way, we can get and target these people. Again, I, I'm hoping you know, you're not going to be sitting right here hanging out. But you know, if you're selling kiddie pools, maybe, maybe you need to jump in, or rubber duckies, or whatever the case is. Um, so when we talk about keywords, we we need to be able to target what our customer persona is looking for. So we, we create this customer for persona, so that way we can identify our keywords. Right? So if you start talking keywords, what do you do? You go out to Google, Google Analytics, Google Webmaster Tools, all those things, and you start trying to find these these, these keywords. These keywords. What you're looking at is you're looking at how many monthly searches they have, how many, you know, how likely are you to search? Is it a high you know, competition, low competition, those types of things. Okay, so you put something out there. Um, say you own a uh, grocery store, and you go out there and you say, "I want to look at the keyword break job." It doesn't make any sense, right? So maybe it's really easy to rank in break job, but it doesn't have anything to do with your customer persona. Okay, so that's an extreme example, but I mean, you kind of see. Why that customer persona is a, important to your keyword research because you want to find the right keywords that are going to drive those customers to to your site. Blogging, I'm blogging this. So this is an example example of what a customer persona is not. This person just saying, "Hey, I'm blogging everything I want." Right? Does it matter? I don't care. It's about me. It's not about you. It's about your customer. It's about your customer persona. It's about creating blog and content that your customer persona wants to engage with. So are you answering the, the, the questions that they have when they're searching online? Are you giving them the content in the right form? Is it a blog, is it a podcast, is it a video? Whatever the case is, you want to make sure that that content that you're creating is for that customer persona. You can't just have the, the mentality of, like I said earlier, the wide net, throw everything out there and see what sticks. You're only one person for the most part, right? I mean, unless you have a team of you know, hundreds and hundreds of people, I guess you can maybe do that. You can keep throwing stuff out there. But if you're just one, two people, you have to identify what blogging topics, what keywords you're going to be putting together. Social media. What social media platforms are your are your customers on? Uh, if they're on Twitter, are you going to spend a whole lot of time on Facebook? Probably not. I, at least in my opinion, that'd be a waste of time. You're getting the majority of your web traffic and customers from one, um, from Twitter and Facebook. You know, this is actually so our my company. Um, we get most of our leads and things from Twitter. Very rarely do we get anything from Facebook. So we we still put content out there, but we don't make specific content for Facebook. We make specific content for Twitter because we know that's where our customers are. Uh, we also do the same thing for LinkedIn because we have more 
four customers come from LinkedIn in the United States. So knowing your customer persona, where they hang out, what they do, how they get their information, that way you can make that content and put it in the in the right place. So that way, because we're only one person, right? If you're on a one man shot, one man show, you can't be going out to Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, creating YouTube videos, creating graphics for Instagram, creating Pinterest boards, creating all these different things. It, it's just too much, right? You're, you're one person, scale it back, know where they're at, and, and focus on what you focus on. Your offer. So this was the worst picture that I, I could find. Because um, what I was trying to show here is, if you create a bad offer, your, your customers aren't going to buy it, right? So if you create your offer based off your customer persona, knowing that that customer persona is going to buy that offer, it could be 10% off, it could be a free ebook, it could be whatever your offer on your blog post is or on your on your website, whatever that offer is, it needs to be directed at that, that customer persona. <laughs> so that's the real high level. Um, kind of wanted to just give you the, the information of what it does. Customer persona is. Any questions? I want to stop here and just any questions about the customer persona and, and what we're going to do next is we're going to go into detail on how to. I'm going to give you an example of one of my customer personas. Do you name your personas? Yes, yeah, you'll see that when we go through this. Um, you can even put pictures and things to it. You can make it look like uh, what we've done in, in my office is we have a big picture of all our different customer personas and it looks I'm going to jump ahead real quick just to show you that. It looks just like this, right? So here, here, here's our customer persona. His name is Mark. We have a big picture of this, and we have a wall with, we, we have more than one customer persona, right? Um, we're trying to target more people as a marketing group. We, we try to, you know, you can have a primary persona, and then you can have secondary personas as well. But we have this in here to remind us what, who we're creating content for. So that way, um, kind of going off on a tangent here a little bit, but I, I like the question. Um, when we, we sit down to do a blog post or something, we just like, oh, we just start throwing the stuff out there. Come back to the second re, uh, revision, and we, we can look at this and say, okay, does this content hit Mark here? His name's actually Donovan, um, but uh, does it hit Donovan? Does it actually hit him, answer his questions, get him to draw him to our website? To get him and draw him to ultimately becoming a customer. Yes, no. If no, then we need to recreate that content or we need to revise it a little bit. If yes, then let's post and get it out there and, and promote that content, right? Any other questions before we kind of dive into building this thing out? No? Okay. Um, I had this nice little thing, but we'll, we'll just go through. So there, there's nine questions when you're creating a customer for something that, that we we sit down and we look at all of these in, in detail. Um, where do you get this information? So you can ask your current customer base. You know, do, do a survey, um, you can get demographic information, you can um, ask uh, leads, as you have leads coming into your website or into your business, you know, how did you find us, what kind of pain point, all those different types of things. Um, you can do surveys, you can, you can pay for this information, you can go out and have a, a company do a survey for you that's, that targets this kind of thing. Um, mostly what we do is we look at uh, what do we want to do, Who, who's our, so if we're creating a new customer persona for our company, we go and we say, okay, what industry, we start with industry, and then we start asking these questions. If we don't have the, the information for it, we, we go and find it. Uh, so, I'll walk you through the questions. So, one, how would your persona describe themselves? Two, what is your persona's job level or level of seniority? Three, what does your persona value most? What are they trying to accomplish, achieve, or what are they working towards? Um, you don't have to write all these down. Like I said, I have a link for you guys. You can get all the, the information. Um, I have this exact deck for you guys. Um, what are their pain points? What problems are they struggling with? Um, this can be personal or business related. Um, for example, I can't we're going to go off on a tangent for a little bit, but just knowing their, their business level problems, yeah, that, that, that helps solve that. But where are they also spending their time? So if they have children, what are, what are the types of things? If you can pull your message into something like that, that's very, very powerful. Now, if you're a mommy blogger and you're talking about children, you're, you've got it made. You already did. Um, what are their most common objections to your products or services? 
So if you know that kind of stuff, then you can start answering questions with them. What is their demographic information? How old are they? You kind of want to get a, a broad perspective of who they are, so that way you can go back and you can create that. You'll find that pretty stock photo of, of who their best workers are, and they can take it through that. Um, what experiences are they looking for when seeking <coughs> products or services like yours? Um, so are they looking for experience? Are they looking for um, quality? You know, what types of things are they looking for? What does a day in the life look like? So knowing this, you can kind of Maybe it starts to help um, pinpoint timing of, of messages. Um, where do they go for information? So we kind of talked about that a little bit on the last one, but it's beyond just social media. It's, um, and we'll get into you know when we get through the example, kind of some of the, some other examples of all that stuff. So, all right. So you saw Mark, Mark the mechanic. Uh, so this, I'm gonna step back so you guys can kind of take a look and see. This picture represents Mark. So when, you, when you're putting this stuff together, you want to make sure that you get a picture that represents this person. So he's a mechanic, right? We got a car over here. He's got his work shirt on. He's got his Matco tools. And in the background, you see all his belt systems. So this really kind of portrays this customer and really shows him in his environment, right? So that way, when you look at this, you have this sitting on your wall. You can say, as I'm putting this, this marketing piece, this campaign together, okay, that, that's who I'm trying to, to target right now. And then under, you know, beyond that, you have all the information. So, so this, the next couple slides is um, I have also as a guide for you guys. You can, you can download it, and it basically will walk you through how, how to do this. I'll give you the example so that way you can see um, kind of in theory how to put this up. Okay, so mark the mechanic. Um, and this, this is the exercise we'll walk through together. Demographics. So what are the de what's their demographic information? How old are they? All that fun stuff, right? Um, so kind of looking at this, what is it? Male in his 40s. Male in his 30s to 40 years old. Makes enough to live in a standard size house. You know, he's not necessarily killing it. He doesn't have a huge house. And he's educated at a technical school. Okay, so we, we, we know a little bit more about him as a person. How do we... No. So that way, when we start talking about creating content, you know, is there anything we can pull in maybe from technical school? Yes. The, where'd you extrapolate that information that you gave Mark that personality? Um, so I pulled this from some of my customers. So I, I went and I pulled, uh, I have three mechanics that we work with. Uh, one's a tire shop, one's a mechanic, and one that's kind of like general stuff. I pulled them and, and I asked them, I basically sat down with each of them and went, these questions, and I just pulled it together to make a you know, kind of a fictional character. Um, that's mostly how I got it. I also did some speculation on, on some things, because uh, you're not going to get, you know, as you see, some of the stuff I kind of made up uh, just based on uh, where they should be in life, those type of things. But going so, to. In some ways, though, it is based on a real customer. It's based off a, a customer set, right? So it's not one direct customer. So like, if this was based no, off- if you go and you interview, like, say, two to five clients or customers, right. and then you find the commonalities among them, that's what creates- Yeah, true. It. So if you had, like, three customers that were very similar, it would start to kind of look like that. So, so say, we, say we had a couple other ones. Say we had, like, five of them. One was in their early 20s, one was 30, one was 40, one was 50, one was about to retire. That gives you a- a very broad overview of it, right? So in, in this, and then what you have to do is you have to say, okay, now I have, okay, age really isn't a factor. So I have, my customers are, are all over the Psych, place. Like similar psychographics. Yeah, yes, yeah. So, but then you can kind of start to kind of put some of the similarities together so that way you know, okay, well, the, the mechanic that's getting ready to retire isn't necessarily my customer persona. Because uh, they're getting ready, ready to retire, maybe we uh, the relationship doesn't go once they retire, so we want to get back at the 30 to 40, kind of get things up and going. So, make sense? Yeah. Um, so, any, any other questions there? Yeah, I got, I got one. So, how, how would you, it almost just looks like a profile. Yeah. Is, is there a difference between the profile and the customer profile? No. I mean, if you're profiling your customer, it, it's the same thing, right? So, um, the customer persona, uh, the way you know, we do it. It just kind of gives a little bit more of the, the touchy feely stuff to profiles. When I, I look at profiles before the past, it's kind of the same information, but there, maybe there's not an actual like fictional character that you're doing. 
So another thing to kind of kind of put here too is you're kind of trying to make like a story out of them, right? And you'll see that at the end. I pull all this stuff into one kind of paragraph. Usually it's a page or so, but uh, for just for this presentation, I made it smaller. But you're trying to put a story together. So like if you had a a story that you're going to do, like a novel, you're you're developing this character. So, um, so how how would your persona describe themselves? So this this is important. Jargon together, or some of the words that they use, try to kind of common find that common common uh, thread there. So if he's a gearhead looking to build his business around his passion. He wants to increase leads. He's a family man with two to three kids. Family always comes first. Um, so I got this from uh, that's why I put two to three kids. One of my clients doesn't have any kids, and another one has four, so it kind of just but in my average, this is kind of. So knowing that, so we know that he, he's a gearhead, he loves cars, obviously that's why he's a mechanic, right? And he's looking to build his business. Okay, so that, that helps us, that, that, or, or me, I have a marketing agency. I, he wants to build his business around his passion, so how can I help him do that? He wants to increase his leads. He doesn't necessarily care about blood travel. He doesn't care about other things. He wants to increase his leads, so how can my agency help him get there? That's his goal. Um, he's a family man of two to three kids, um, so I know not to call him at, at dinner. You know, maybe it's as easy as that, so you can start to put that kind of uh, perspective together. Uh, what's your persona's job level or seniority? Um, this one's an easy one. He's the owner of a shop. He calls his own shots. But when you start to look at other things, so like if I was looking at my agency again, and I'm starting to go to like uh, mid-sized businesses, is this persona? It may not be the owner. It may be a marketing manager, it may be a director, it may be something of that nature. Or it could be marketing manager slash director, but you're kind of starting to put some of that information in so you know what kind of titles you're looking for. The reason you don't want to put one job title down, like marketing manager, because they may be called something different at a different company. Right? So it could be like uh, marketing associate, marketing manager, it's the same, it's the same thing, the same responsibility. Okay, so we kind of sum this up. So Mark loves cars and is looking to build his business around his passion. He owns his own shop and is looking to generate leads to build his business. He is a family man with two to three kids and puts family above all. So then we have a kind of an understanding of, of who he is from a demographic standpoint. Any, any questions here? Sure. So Mark is the end customer or your customer like so okay good good um so a customer persona like say all of you are my customers right so it's not necessarily you it's a representation of everybody that's working mm -hmm. right is that, is that but he's who we're going after to yeah potentially pay us yeah yeah so if you have a product or service you're trying to put this this together so mm -hmm. when i'm going out of my agency we're looking for um mark mechanics we're looking you know his name's honestly not mark John, Joey, whatever. So on the client side, they're what? What is Mark buying, or what? What service so, is he going for? Yes. So that's kind of what this starts to build. So if you, so for, for my agency, for yeah. Example, just just as an example, like what? Like are we selling belts? Are we selling? Yeah. <laughs> so so I'm a, I'm a marketing agency. So that's why I put this in here. Right? He wants to increase his leads. So he wants to get more leads to his business. As a marketing agency, I know that, and I can now go and put a plan in place for. Right, so that that's okay. You know, so you're the marketing be, company, and, and Mark's <coughs> buying marketing from you. Yeah, so he gotcha. needs help marketing. Um, so that's Mark okay. marketing. Gotcha. Well, a good example would be like ten years ago, he probably had the same business, but he wasn't on the internet. Mm -hmm. But today, everything he does is on a mobile app. Yeah, and it could be you know, yeah, email marketing. It could be you know um, maybe he needs a new website. You know those types of things. So when we start to put these these plans in place, we know what he's looking. So he wants to increase leads. So now he can, I know that. Now I can say, okay, well, the way we're going to increase leads is we need to revamp your website. We need to get email capture, and we need to be able to set up auto-responding email programs. So now I know what services I can offer him to meet his goal of increasing leads. Right. So another example would be like if you have a, uh, you're an insurance agent, right? So you put all this stuff together. This insurance agent um, wants to find uh, so, so there are a couple pop, you know, newly, new, newlyweds, right? So, an insurance agent trying to get 
um, this is from newlyweds. So now you start to put this newlywed picture together. Maybe it's not just one person now, maybe it's a couple, right? So you're putting a couple together. Uh, but you answer these questions around that newlywed, so that way you know how you can target them, find them, and ultimately market to them effectively. Does that make sense? Does that help? Would you be looking for configurations of other companies to pitch at once? I'm looking at just that part without the rest of it. Number one, because he looks tired. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Good point. Number yeah, two, he's three kids. Of course he's tired. Yeah, and that, that makes sense. Number two, he is not a really fashion conscious person, even though he's dressed neatly and cleanly yeah. in the photo, because his beard is not yep. neatly configured. Yep. Um, and so if he cared more about his own personal look, but he's probably busy trying to get the kids to the soccer games and all those yep. things with his yep. wife. Um, and he is not in physically good shape. So he is not um, he a candidate for the uh, vegetarian restaurants yeah. flyer. Yeah, yeah, you're not going to go to the local gym and, and put some flyers in there, right? Yeah. It's not so be. when you're thinking of this persona, if you have somebody who wants to perhaps do group media kind of thing with all right, you're selling um, somebody who has a firm that sells a uh, hand cleaner, which you could use, you know, for grease and whatever. Yep. But then maybe there's somebody else who sells uh, the service that can clean his shirts and his, his uh, staff's uniforms. Yep. So do you ever do that kind of project where you group different categories of potential business? Uh, so we would, we would do it for our clients, right? So if, yeah. so if me, me personally, um, if we had a dry cleaner that came into us and said they needed help creating a persona for a mechanic, yeah, this, this would be a little bit different, but but the exercise is the same. But yes, we would put that together based off of the product or service that the client is selling. Right. Mm -hmm. So that way, it's not like oh well, we're, we already have this one done. This is for our own marketing agency. Right. That does, doesn't really make sense. It, it's similar statistics and and commonalities, but. Um, you know, some of the other things, like he, dry cleaner doesn't care that he wants to increase his business, right? right? Yeah. I, I do as a marketing agency. Dry cleaner does. To remember with Masama marketing, like if you're a school district and you're a marketing person, Mark is 500 people. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Exactly. It, it could be anybody out there that could that could use your. your that's why we're trying to put this together. Is because it could be. One person, it could be a thousand people, it could be ten thousand people. But this gives you kind of an identifying way of targeting versus going to each per all thousand people and saying, Okay, I need to create something for you. Talk to me. And then go to the next one. You, you, you can't really do that. But this kind of starts to generalize your your customers. A little bit. Uh, so a day in the life. So it just kind of continues to get more and more information about this customer and who they are. Um, putting some other you know, ideas in your head. Um, so when you're creating your marketing content, it, it, it helps put a plan in place. Uh, so what does the day in the life look like? Um, so Mark is constantly on the go. He works the front office answering phones, and he also works on the customer team. He needs more time to be with family and tend to his children's games and pets. Okay, so we know that he's a busy guy. He doesn't have a whole lot of help. Uh, maybe, and maybe that's why he's trying to increase leads so he can grow his business again. So now we can start to answer those questions. Some of it's going to be, you know, we're going to make assumptions on some of this stuff. But knowing this, now we can say, okay, he needs more help to do this. And maybe we throw out something about how to manage your office better. You know, something, something of that nature so that way it pulls them in and, and it, it's engaging time. Uh, so what is your persona value most? What are they trying to accomplish, achieve, or what are they working towards? Um, so his customers are his lifeline to his business. He would like to expand his shop to include a new service bay and hire help so that he can focus on growing the business. Um, so he, he knows that he can't grow the business but he doesn't have enough cash to hire somebody out here. Um, so now we can maybe there's some other ways of you know, cutting the costs or some other things that we can kind of help him out with. Um, so um, as insurance agents, uh, you know, looking at it from an insurance agent, looking at this, maybe um, it's, it's lowering his is workers' comp, you know, it's the lowering his insurance, maybe life insurance, finding ways that maybe he can cut some um, some cost out of his budget so maybe he can go in and hire that, that, that person. You know, 
So it, it's those types of things. So as so again, these are kind of general. They're a lot more detailed when you do it yourself. But this kind of helps you start putting those those questions in place so you can create the, the content for this whole thing. Um, what experiences are they looking for when seeking products or services like this? Uh, so Mark, he's looking to increase his leads coming into a shop. He would like to be uh, like to be able to focus on customers and creating new ones. Um, so basically, he's just looking to, to expand his, his customer base. So again, day in the life is kind of looking at what he does day to day, so that way he can start to kind of okay, envision his day from opening the shop to going home, so you can kind of start to understand who this guy is. But Mark is hustling every day to keep his shop open. He manages both the service and the office while taking care of customers. Cash is tight in the shop, but he's willing to invest in his company if it would be would give him the opportunity to increase the staff and expand the service base. So he knows in order to get to servicing more people, he needs to get another service pay and he has to hire staff. So what can you do as a company to help him? Uh, challenges and pain points. Uh, what are the pain points? What are the problems they're struggling with? And how can you help them solve those? Well, th this is where we really start to be able to kind of see well, how the customer persona uh, is valuable and how we can use it to, to market them. Uh, so Mark is limited on time to invest in marketing. Okay, so we know he's busy. He's doing all this other stuff. So marketing, maybe it's a, an after company. It's a secondary thing. Uh, maybe washing his work clothes is a secondary thing, too. So if you're a dry cleaner, you know that he's... <laughs> He doesn't have time to invest in marketing, so he maybe he doesn't have time to do laundry. So now your service is of value. Um, he also lacks experience to effectively market his new customers. Maybe he doesn't have a washing machine, and that's why you're, you're dry cleaning your clothes, right? Um, but you know, so when you're looking at it from your customer or from your company, how does this? How does your your company start to solve these problems? So for for my agency, right, I can help him. I have the experience in marketing, and I can um, save him time so he doesn't have to do it himself, right? So now, okay, now we're really starting to get to where I, as a marketing agency, can help him. Now when I create content and I create things, what am I trying to do? What am I trying to grab him with and pull him into, into my agency, right? So is, that, is it starting to kind of come together a little bit more? So there's some questions. I know it's kind of a... Okay. What are the most common objections to your products or services? So knowing this um, also helps you. So if it's so for, so for mine, it's uh, it's price. He's trapped for cash. Um, you know, services a lot of times maybe he doesn't think he can afford a service. Um, so maybe uh, looking at it from and I've done this with some of my clients is I, I kind of baby step them into a full uh, full marketing uh, service, right? So maybe it's like okay, he needs a website. Okay, let's let's redo the website. Maybe he can come up with thousand bucks or so to kind of revamp the website, make the website, okay, to start the website set. Okay, what's the next thing you want to invest in email marketing? Okay, now we can help you do that. Okay, so you kind of baby step them, and then hopefully if you're doing this the right way, you're saving him time, now, especially for, for, for my agency, we're growing the, the business, and now he has a little bit more money to invest in, and now he's starting to see it work. He's starting to see the leads coming, so now he's like, okay, a little bit more room. Um, dry cleaner, um, so we know that he, um, Strap for cash. Maybe he doesn't want to do dry cleaning, but so maybe there's like a monthly, you know, unlimited plan or something that, that you offer. It's like wash as much as you want for thirty bucks a, a month. Um, so that way he can, you know, whatever the product or the service, or he can create something that that's going to pull. Okay, so Mark lacks time to effectively manage a marketing business. He is looking for an experienced marketer that can help solve helps. Would help other small businesses grow and, and help identify target target new leads. So again, it's just kind of pulling this all together and starting to get to a place where we understand who this person is and how can we effectively engage with them. Okay, so um, this is kind of the last one, and then we'll be building up for questions, kind of have a discussion to see if there's anything else that, that we can uh, have questions on. But um, where do they get their information? This, this is huge. Right, so we kind of talk about social media, um, knowing the platforms, but it, it, it's so much more than that, right? So um, where do they go for their info? Trade shows. Maybe he's big in the trade shows. So 
knowing that as as marketing agency, now I need to go into the trade shows. I need to be at places that I can see. Um, insurance agents, you need to go into some of these trade shows that he's going to be at so that you can show your products and services. Chamber of Commerce. Um, so find his Chamber of Commerce and get involved if you can. Um, the thing with like customer personas is you're going to want to look at where geographically they're located, right? So it kind of goes back to it. But if you know they're part of the Chamber of Commerce, maybe there's the Chamber of Commerce in Tempe that, uh, you know, maybe there's a there's hundred different mechanics and that's it is a good place to kind of go and be seen and kind of get involved. Um, online magazines. He likes online magazines. He doesn't get prints, but he likes online stuff. Uh, so knowing that, you're not going to advertise in a print magazine, right? You're not going to put your, yeah, print shop. Um, sorry, if there's any But um, you are going to go to online magazines, and maybe you can do some banner ads, maybe you can do um, some other types of things, maybe you can do some guest blogging, maybe you can do some you know, stuff. So, um, Social media. He does go to social media. Now you need to know which social media platforms he's on and why. So if he's on Facebook, now it's just to share, you know, tips and tricks. Or tips and tricks about what kids like. Tips about parenting. Um, and maybe that's kind of where, like, I, I don't really have anything for you there. But maybe on Twitter or LinkedIn, he's more professional looking for other things, and you know. So that, that's the other thing. So if everybody's on on one thing, and you need to know how they're using it. Like I said, if I'm sharing photos of my children, um, I don't want to be marketed there, so it might be a big turn off. Right? But if I have a LinkedIn profile um, that is all about you know my business, blah blah blah, maybe that's where you can kind of get that lead or you can kind of get that, that introduction. So Mark uses trade shows, the local chamber of commerce, online magazines and blogs, as well as social media to gather information about products or services he normally researches before making. I kind of put some of this other stuff in there. Um, like said, it, when you actually do this, I hope there's a lot more detail into it. Um, really get to know numbers and figures and get very precise. Like social media, you wouldn't just say social media, you would say Twitter, you would say LinkedIn, you would say you know, whatever the media is. So, um, so this is kind of your, your end product. So it looks very similar to that, that first one. But what you do is you compile all this information. You now have this customer story, which is basically just a summary of all these kind of um, rehashed <coughs> topics. And then you have this one sheet, or usually it's going to be a sheet or two, um, where you're know, trying to get everything in one, one place. But this is your customer. You have, you have your picture. And you know, this is who we're trying to identify with. This is who we're trying to get in the mindset of. Uh, give them a title, give them a name, and then put his story next to Questions. I know I, like I said, I know I threw a, kind of a lot at you, and it's a, it's a different way of looking at things, but um, questions on here? So like, how would you get Mark, who you said in the beginning Twitter is kind of your best. <laughs> like, so Mark's on Twitter somehow. Yep. How do you get Mark to go to you for marketing? Yep. So now that I know that he's on Twitter, um, now I can start looking at hashtags, right? So are there hashtags where I can look at his feed and kind of see what he's talking about? Um, I can go into and look at his feed too, or start, you know, and there, there's different services and things out there, you know, Hootsuite does it. You can start putting in uh, phrases, those types of things. So that way, if you know that he's on Twitter, so you know, we'll go back, right? Um, so we know he's on Twitter, and we know that he's looking for, um, let's see here. He's looking for, more, maybe he's looking for marketing help that, that's cheap. Right, so maybe that's that's the marketing tips is the, the keyword that we're looking for on Twitter. So now we can start kind of maybe filtering through that stuff, and then okay, here's here's a mechanic, and he said I need marketing tips, blah blah blah, whatever the case is. Then maybe you can respond to him and say, hey, we have a you know, top five ways to market your mechanic shop or your auto body, that type of thing. Get that that direct. Um, so you would just tweet that out, or would you? Yeah, you just like reply back to his tweet, or or something of that nature, or um, that way it's like, okay, here here's data that you are an article that you could use. Here's how we would use it, um, and that's what we do a lot. We we have Twitter feeds that are looking for different things out there, and then if we see you know like a um, small business owner is is looking for marketing something, you know whatever keyword is, 
we'll find one of our blog posts, we respond back to that tweet. And then hopefully within that, it's kind of like, it's the introduction. It's like, oh, thanks for the article, blah, 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 blah. And then maybe it's the, okay, you know, if you need more information, you can call us. You know, kind of it's, it's getting that, that initial contact. I know you can't, you put this together and it could be 10,000 people, right? So that, that's kind of like the problem. So that's what this information serves to give you um, ideas and kind of formulate different ways of where you need to target your efforts, right? So um, if you know that, um, let's see, we're kind of doing some examples, but uh, so yeah, it's limited time. So maybe we put a, uh, a blog post out there that's the top five time-saving tactics, you know, that he's out there on in, in Twitter and he's talking about how he doesn't have enough time to do blah 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 blah. We find that, we then, hey, here's the blog post of the top five time saving tactics. Or right. business tactics, you know, whatever. Or the, the, the time is, but that's how we then get that that introduction and kind of start to so have a conversation yeah. basically. So you generate content within your site or wherever, and then you're searching Twitter to look according to the persona. And trying to send them to your content. Yeah, basically. And then hopefully the way they read that, you know, going kind of the next step beyond it, right? So you have your blog post, but you also have like your call to action or sign up for a digital platform, those types of things. If you have a if you're offering the value and then you have that call to action and click on it, now you have the email address, now you can continue that conversation. And you know, maybe now you're not searching for them, now you have their you know, there's an auto responder program yeah. that you have once they hit that that call to action button. Now over the next two weeks, you're automatically sending stuff out there. So it's all part of the, the game plan, right? So knowing this, looking at it so you know who they are, how they're looking for things, how do you engage with them, and then you can put your campaigns in, into place to really target down and, and uh, improve your marketing efforts. Do you find in those contacts that obviously you're not going to put them in 100 point count, there's all five tips or whatever. What do you find the book most effective for link? I use Bitly, and I'm not wondering if this something is better for. I use Bitly. Bitly. Yeah, you'll, you'll see that. I love Bitly because you can customize the link. It's, uh, and if, if there's something like that too, like um, if you really want to kind of go to the next step with Bitly, since, since we're talking about it, um, if you can. So a lot of times, what I'll do is I'll find something, and when I tweet back to them, I'll go into a custom uh, uh, link. That'll be you know, Bitly. Here, I'll show you. Um, so down here, right? So this is where you're going to get your slides. So I did, I did have Phoenix. They haven't taken it yet, so I, I used it. <laughs> um, but what you can do is you can go into Bitly and you can do, so a lot of times what I do is I do P-I-T-F-M, punch in the face marketing, underscore mark, or whatever their name is. So that it personalizes it. They see that that custom link come, oh, come across. And uh, you know, it's like, oh, they did one more thing. So. Um, any more questions or any? Where do you typically send people? Like your own hosted website or WordPress or always to my blog or to my website or, or, or somehow, some way? Because basically, what you're trying to do is because even if you just tweet them out, they're not going to get that that first. You're not going to get the sale on that first time, right? That first touch. Yeah. So if you get them back to your website, at least there you have some control, mm -hmm. um, and you can kind of send them through a funnel through your sales funnel that you, that you put together. So. But knowing that, what is that sales going to be? Putting this information out. Oh, okay. um, we'll wrap up. So uh, email me. Uh, there's my email address, stephen.bailey at functionfacemarketing.com. I know that's a long URL, but um, it works. It works. It works. And that's what I'm told. So if you need more information, punch in face marketing, punch in the face dot marketing or punch in face marketing dot com. I just purchased this not too long ago, so I wanted to show you. <laughs> Shiny new toy. Um, or you can go, I, I put a landing page out there, so if you want to um, get the slides, get the, basically it's this without the, the answers. Uh, and no, no, no marks up there. Uh, but then you can put your own together, and then there's also some other stuff on there. That you guys have. Uh, and once this is done recording, I'll put the video on there as well. So. What do you mean by break through the noise?
Thanks, guys. Okay.